Over the last few years, research has identified a specific kind of autoimmune problem that exists in illnesses like myalgic encephalomyelitis, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome, and in long COVID. And this kind of autoimmunity can explain a lot of the key symptoms of these conditions, such as exercise intolerance and the brain fog that tends to exist. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. But first, if you are new to this channel, my name is Patrick Usher and I'm an ME-CFS patient. And this is the place where I aim to offer simplified explanations of the research into ME-CFS so that you can be more empowered into understanding the nature of these kinds of conditions. It's also a place where I share various treatment strategies that I have tried in order to improve my condition. If that sounds of interest to you, please like and subscribe. So when we say the word autoimmunity, we usually think of conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease in which the body is attacking itself. Now, in those kinds of illnesses, the body will have mistakenly identified uh, some aspect of itself as foreign and therefore will begin to launch an immune attack against that part of the body. So in rheumatoid arthritis, the body is launching an attack against the joints and it's breaking them down. In Crohn's disease, it's launching an attack against the digestive tract and breaking it down. However, in ME-CFS, the nature of the autoimmunity is not like this. The body is not attacking itself. Instead, it's doing something rather different. In ME-CFS and related illnesses, the autoimmunity is instead best thought of as being like a kind of disruptive signal. It's a disruptive signal that is blocking normal, healthy physiological processes. It's kind of disrupting the physiological function. Now, Professor Klaus Wirth, who has done a lot of work in this area, summarizes the difference between normal autoimmune conditions and the autoimmunity in ME-CFS as follows. He writes, Autoimmunity in ME-CFS does not directly damage the body, as is the case in other autoimmune diseases, but rather impairs proper physiological function to favour the development and chronification of ME-CFS. Chronification is simply a word that means when an illness becomes embedded or established over time. So therefore, in ME-CFS, we would expect there to be a different kind of autoimmune phenomenon or substance that is at play. And indeed, there is. And this autoimmune substance is called a functional autoantibody. So in ME-CFS, there are these functional autoantibodies that are being produced at an unusually large rate. And it is these that are causing the disruptive signaling effect. Because this is what functional autoantibodies do. They are best thought of as being like negative hormones. They have an instructive effect which is negative, which blocks normal physiological processes. Now, a healthy person will have these functional autoantibodies as well, but the difference in ME-CFS is the quantity. There are so much more of these autoantibodies that the signaling effect, the disruptive effect, becomes much stronger. Now, the body has loads of autoantibodies in general, but the kinds of autoantibodies that are particularly common in ME-CFS and long COVID belong to a group of autoantibodies called autoantibodies against G-protein coupled receptors. And we're going to talk all about the ones that are causing the problems in these sorts of conditions. But first, I just want to explain a little more about how it is that functional autoantibodies disrupt core bodily processes. So we have trillions of cells throughout our body. And each of these cells has many different receptors on them. And these cell receptors are looking for instructions from the body, from the brain, in order to act in a certain way. So you have, uh, let's say, a cell receptor to open up blood vessels, to vasodilate. So that cell receptor would be waiting, looking for an instruction from the body, a message from the body to uh, open up, uh, to, to enact a process whereby the blood vessels are opened because this might be needed for some reason. So when you have the functional autoantibodies, they are actually going to be uh, blocking specific cell receptors from doing their job. They will, uh, the functional autoantibody will be created and it will go to the cell receptor and it will say, no, you can't do what you normally do. And this is what creates the disruptive, negative hormone-like signaling effect 
of the functional autoantibodies, which is so central to the nature of the autoimmunity in ME-CFS. So there are four autoantibodies in particular that cause the, the symptoms in ME-CFS. They are anti-beta-1 autoantibodies, anti-beta-2 autoantibodies, anti-muscarinic-3 and anti-muscarinic-4. So all of these things are autoantibodies against specific receptors. So the beta-1 receptors, the beta-2 receptors, muscarinic-3 and 4 receptors, they're all anti those, they're all blocking the activity of those receptors. So in order to understand what this autoimmunity is doing, we need to think about what is the healthy function of each of these receptors, and then we can understand what it is that the autoantibodies are doing, because they are simply reducing that healthy function. So now let's go through each of these autoantibodies in turn. And so with beta-1 receptors, in your, in your heart, the, 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 the greatest number of receptors are beta-1 receptors. And so under healthy function, the beta-1 receptors will activate in order to pump the heart strongly. So they're really important for what's called the stroke volume, getting the blood pumping around the body, perfusing into all the different tissues with a strong pumping mechanism. Beta-1 receptors are also found elsewhere in the body. They are found in the kidneys, and there they instruct the kidneys to hold onto salt. And they're also found in, uh, they also have a role in the loss of fat, in fat burning. Therefore, if you have the autoantibodies against beta-1 receptors, these functions will all be impaired to some degree. Your heart will not pump so strongly, your kidneys will not be able to retain salt so well, and you will uh, have difficulties burning fat. So this obviously ties in with ME-CFS very well because there is exercise intolerance. So it makes sense that if your heart can't pump so well, uh, you're not going to be able to take exercise. Um, it also ties in with the low blood volume that develops in ME-CFS. Now this is often thought of as being a more kind of functional issue. There's kind of various um, signals that are getting disrupted. I've done a whole video about the main reasons for the development of low blood volume, which is now linked above. But this is also an autoimmune reason as to why someone might develop low blood volume, why they are losing salt all the time in the urine in ways that they shouldn't be. And that, of course, will increase the exercise intolerance because when you have low blood volume, you, 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 your cardiovascular system doesn't have enough blood to work with. And interestingly, in heart failure, uh, patients have also been found to have a high number of anti-beta-1 autoantibodies, which gives us a link between ME-CFS and heart failure. Okay, so now we move on to the second autoimmune problem that's very common in ME-CFS and long COVID, anti-beta-2 autoantibodies. So in this case, the beta-2 receptors under normal healthy circumstances are responsible for the uh, perfusion of blood, the seeping of blood into the muscles and into the brain. So the beta-2 receptors are located in the blood vessels that are more peripheral in the body. They're, they're in the blood vessels in the muscles, in the brain. Uh, they're not really in the blood vessels going back up to the heart. So this problem that I'm describing does not apply there. But they have a, their, their central role is to be able to vasodilate, to open up the blood vessels and uh, when needed and allow blood to get into the muscles. Now this is for example very important if you are you know you're a healthy person and you want to go for a run because when you're running the muscles need more blood they need more oxygen and so there's a dramatic increase of blood flow when someone is going for a run into the muscles. So if you don't if you have the autoantibodies against the beta-2 receptors, you're not going to be able to, you know, your, your blood vessels won't be able to open up and get the blood into the muscles when you, when you want to take exercise. And so this obviously has a major implication for ME-CFS and why someone would develop exercise intolerance. They want to uh, go, for, go for a brisk walk, but the blood doesn't get into the muscles. And so the muscles say, no, nope, sorry, can't, we can't do it. They reach their breaking point um, and, and the development of uh, lactic acid and post-exertional malaise and you crash. So these autoantibodies are you know, hugely responsible for this. They're also responsible for brain fog and cognitive dysfunction. 
um, because they are impeding the flow of blood into the brain. However, the beta-2 receptors are involved in other activities as well. For example, glucose regulation and the secretion of insulin. Uh, so if you have these autoantibodies, you will have problems with blood sugar metabolism. They're also involved, very interestingly, given a lot of symptoms people have, uh, the beta-2 receptors are involved in histamine, uh, like inhibiting histamine, in, in, in stopping histamine from being released, and from inhibiting mast cells. So if you have the autoantibodies, you're going to actually have uh, these strange histamine reactions. So for example, you're eating uh, a curry, an Indian curry, and afterwards you break out in spots. Well, it could be because the normal mechanisms that your body um, has in order to actually suppress histamine release, they're not working. And so you get this rogue kind of... Um, rogue uh, allergic reaction to the food that you've been eating. So beta-2 receptors and beta-2 autoantibodies therefore can explain some really key elements of the nature of ME-CFS and long COVID. The third autoimmune problem that's uh, very common in ME-CFS is anti-muscarinic 3 autoantibodies. Now this is particularly interesting, can explain an awful lot of problems, this, this one. Um, First of all, you'll ask me, what does muscarinic even mean? Well, muscarinic is a medical term for the parasympathetic nervous system or the rest and digest nervous system. So if you have anti-muscarinic 3 autoantibodies, you actually have an autoimmune problem that's stopping your parasympathetic nervous system from working normally. It will be working to some degree, but many of the rest and digest functions in the body will be uh, blocked. To a certain extent. And this is interesting because, you know, often, including myself, um, people with ME-CFS will practice methods in order to regulate the nervous system, in order to calm it down, things like meditation and visualization. But uh, even though that will, of course, work to an extent, if you have these particular autoantibodies, you have an autoimmune problem that is working against you from actually uh, softening the nervous system down all the time. So there's a kind of limit that's being placed on how far you can get with your attempts to regulate the nervous system. Now, anti-muscarinic 3 autoantibodies are involved in many more ways of uh, dysregulating the body. There are muscarinic 3 receptors in all of your endocrine glands, so all of your glands that produce hormones, like in the pituitary, your adrenal glands, and your thyroid. So if you have anti-muscarinic 3 autoantibodies, you're going to start developing things like reduced hormone output. You might develop hypothyroidism, you might develop hypocorticalism, where you have a slight reduction in cortisol. And it's actually being driven by this autoimmune phenomenon, which is blocking the normal function of your uh, hormone-producing glands. So that's obviously very relevant for ME-CFS, where there often is this slight reduction in hormones across the board. Now, uh, it doesn't stop there, it gets worse. So the anti-muscarinic 3 autoantibodies will also create dryness throughout the body. People with these autoantibodies will, also, will often feel like they are drying up. And the reason for that is that the muscarinic 3 receptors under healthy circumstances are also involved in all of the exocrine glands in the body, all of the glands that produce moisture. So when you have the anti-muscarinic 3 autoantibodies, you will have difficulty producing enough saliva, enough sweat, uh, tears, mucus, um, uh, moisture in more intimate areas, hair secretions, all of these kinds of things, even secretions internally in the gastrointestinal tract will become less, like the release of bile from the pancreas. And so in general, people dry up. Now interestingly, 97% of patients with Sjogren's disease, Sjogren's syndrome, um, an autoimmune condition which causes severe dryness, also have anti-muscarinic 3 autoantibodies. And finally, we have the anti-muscarinic 4 autoantibodies, um, which are very common in ME-CFS and long COVID. 
Now, not so much is known about muscarinic 4 receptors. They haven't been studied enough. But what we do know is that they are central in a part of the brain that controls dopamine release, the release of the neurotransmitter that is responsible for reward um, and pleasure. And when you have a high number of anti-muscarinic 4 autoantibodies, you're going to be blocking those receptors that are responsible for dopamine release. This means you're getting a kind of hypodopaminergic state. You're getting a low dopamine state. And what we know from uh, mice studies is that when mice have reduced receptor capacity in this area of the brain, uh, uh, muscarinic 4 receptor capacity, they start to become more addicted to cocaine and to Im they become more impulsive as well. So if, since you have become ill, you feel like you've become more of an addict, you're looking for dopamine hits all the time, you're more impulsive, you don't have as much willpower, whatever it might be, hopefully it's not cocaine like it was for the mice, but maybe it's chocolate or it's, you know, constant technology hits. You want to check social media all the time, all day long. It may well be because you have these anti-muscarinic 4 autoantibodies, which are impairing your release of dopamine, lowering it. And then as a compensation, you are seeking dopamine uh, uh, your dopamine hit behaviors in order to try and bring up your dopamine levels. You're trying to squeeze out dopamine from life in order to feel more normal. So this, these autoantibodies can explain this phenomenon. Right, so that's it. That's the nature of autoimmunity in ME-CFS. They are these four autoantibodies. Now, there are other autoantibodies that often occur in these kinds of illnesses. So actually, uh, in POTS, for example, there's a whole other five or six autoantibodies that tend to occur. But the ones that I've talked about today uh, the autoantibodies in uh, are the ones that are specific more to ME-CFS and long COVID. And so just in summary, uh, these are autoantibodies. They're not attacking the body. They're not destroying the body, but they are disrupting basic physiological processes. They are doing that by blocking normal uh, healthy function of specific cell receptors. Those cell receptors are um, uh, mainly concerned with the strong pumping of the heart, with the perfusion of blood into the muscles and brain, uh, with the regulation of histamine and mast cells, with salt retention, with uh, the regulation of the parasympathetic nervous system, with the, um, uh, the functioning of the various hormonal glands and the functioning of the exocrine glands producing moisture, and finally with dopamine uh, creation. So when you have these autoantibodies, all of those functions are getting impaired. And if you think about it, once these problems uh, get set in, once they become developed, this will create a significant physiological burden, which in and of itself can explain why someone might uh, exercise too much and get post-exertional malaise, or why someone might feel very dry, or why, or why might someone have various uh, issues with uh, a reduced output of certain hormones. So I hope you found this video of help. Uh, please leave your comments down below. Please leave your questions down below. Um, the YouTube algorithm is currently ignoring me. So if you want to help this channel grow, please like, subscribe, share and comment. In the next series of videos about autoimmunity, I'm going to talk about how to test for this problem, no matter where you might be in the world. I'm going to talk about uh, a treatment that's available right now for autoimmune problems like this uh, in Germany called immunoabsorption. And I'm going to talk about a treatment that is very exciting and which will be available in the not so distant future called Berlin Cures. So that's it. I look forward to engaging with you. And if you want to learn more about me, about my consultation service, about the various books that I have written, one on POTS, one on thirst in ME-CFS and long COVID, please look at the description box below.